Zell and I, we were talking the other day. I think it was like about two weeks ago or three. And that's when this, what we are about to share came about. I've also shared this with Victoria. If I go on, I want to tell you that I have made our having conferences very easy. I brought Ustream. The only reason why I turned Ustream on was that someone brought to my attention that not many people were watching. More people were watching on YouTube and on the conference call line and less people were on the Ustream, on the live streaming. That's why we turn it off. We don't need it. We will need it when I will be doing like free conferences outside Wichita. Then maybe we can use that for, for it, for more people to see it. The reason there is a future that is on the conference call that I can just touch and everybody goes off. No conference will begin unless I'm there. And when I, when I leave the conference, suddenly it drops everybody. Geneva, you remember that feature. I turn it off so that, yeah, so that somebody like Mary or Geneva or Victoria can start off. Sometimes it's not fair or Rene, it's not fair that I just come in and I just start speaking. I allow everyone a time for you guys to talk and share because that's how it's supposed to be. It's a family thing. But what happened tonight is making me to become, to go back and put that feature in. Let's go to what we are doing tonight. I always know that whenever we talk about things that touches Democrats and Republicans, people become angry. As though there is something you are getting from those parties. Nothing. Because many of you, you've, you've, you've voted. What have you gained? Nothing. Tonight, I want to talk to you about in case you've been trying to buy a house or to find a house to rent or a very quality apartment to rent and stay there while you have your job and save money to buy a house. If you are living that is L-I-V-I-N-G. If you are resident with your son or your daughter or family members, this is for you. And you have been doing everything in your power to find your own accommodation. And you cannot find it. I'm going to tell you also why. If I have prayed for you, and the house has not yet emerged. Or if you want to buy a land. This is for you tonight. If you are trying to get a job. You have applied, applied, applied. And no one is accepting you. Your kind of job has not emerged. You are finding job that pays you less money. This is for you. <laughs> if you are trying to buy a car, whenever you put the money together, something happened. You can't afford a very nice ride. You've done everything. It's not working out for you to purchase your dream car. This is for you. If you've been trying to get married, you've done everything to find the right person. I'm going to ask you tonight, 
Go and get your name, delete and close your account from every dating site that you belong to. Just obey me. Whether you are an older man or woman or a younger man or woman, go and delete your account on any dating site that you have put yourself into. And I'm going to tell you why. Because it means you are the one that is looking or you are putting your picture out there for people to see you. Including pictures that is you when you were 15 or 18 years old. You put it out there. But now you, are, you don't look like that picture. Because you are trying to get a woman. Or you are trying to get a man. You've been looking. What I'm telling you is an order. God told me to say this and to tell you this. If you are on any dating site, go and delete your account right away. And you are the you are the you are the person I'm talking to tonight. If you are looking for somebody to date you, somebody to marry you, whether you're a man or a woman, if you try to hide behind the scene and say that I'm not seeing you. And that God is not seeing you. What I'm going to do tonight is not going to benefit you. And you will remain in a situation of singleness till the day you die. Because you are not listening. And you do not want to obey. If you are trying to go to college. Whether for your baccalaureate. Or for your master's degree. Or for your doctorate. You've done everything to get a scholarship. And it's not forthcoming. This is for you. When I finish ministering tonight. Then you can proceed. Then you will know how to proceed. I am not just saying this. Because God has talked to me. To say it tonight. But I'm also telling you. Out of my own personal encounter with the presence and power of God and how he functions. If you've been trying to become pregnant and you cannot get pregnant. And if you're a man, you can't make a woman pregnant. You can't make your wife or girlfriend pregnant. I have to put girlfriend. Because even if I tell you to, to wait until you get married, you still go and do your own thing. So I have to be, I have to be real. Because I know, I know of fathers who told their son, don't wait until you get married. Make anybody pregnant. And they've done that. I know of fathers and mothers who have told their daughter, don't wait until you get married. Get pregnant. Because you are getting older. Don't think that I'm not seeing it or I'm not hearing it. When you are looking for something, for example, those who have been told to go and delete their account on any dating line, please hurry and do it. The reason is this. You've tried your best. You've done everything for people to see you. You've dressed up in those sexy outfits and still it's not working. <laughs> you've made your hair. You braid it. You paint it. You have bent it. You have boiled it, smoked it. You have made your face look good. What You've done everything. There is no lotion. Powder. Rosy cheek that you've not applied to your face and yet they've not yet seen you. <laughs> Doesn't that tell you that something is going on? You painted your nails. You've gone and done a job on your butt. If you didn't have no butt, you've gone to the plastic surgeons for them to make it come up a little bit. If it was wobbly, they've made it round and shiny. Still, 
it has not attracted the husband to you. Or if you're a man, you've gone, they've sized you down, make your belly go down so that you can be a little bit athletic because you've been told that women love athletic body built men. You go to the gym every day, they've not yet seen you. Aha! You've gone through all the different people and cooperation to teach you how to pass your exams. They've taught you how to, how to, how to, how to dress and what to say when you go to an interview. You've done all that. They've not yet given you the job, your dream job. They've told you to polish your credit reports, make your credit history good. You paid money, they've done all of that. It's not yet buying you a car, your dream car, nor your dream house. Listen to what the Lord has asked me to say to you tonight and what he has asked me to do for you tonight. He said, I shall tell you to get out of the way. Hallelujah. Get out of the way so that God can get in the way. Get out of the way so that God can move into the house. You've been trying to sell a piece of land. You've been trying to sell a house. You've been trying to sell your old car or fairly used car. You've been trying to get inheritance. They've cheated you. You put a lawyer. He's not working. This is the word of the Lord for you tonight. This is a powerful prayer. Get out of my way so that I can come in. Because this is how it is. You've tried. It's not that you're lazy. It's not that you sat back for God to come and do it for you. It's not that you are looking for somebody else to come and do it for you. You've done everything you can do. You've tried to go to college. Towards the end of it, something happened, you drop out, bam. Or at the end of the first year, you drop out, bam. You got a job. Suddenly one day, you got into it with your colleagues. You got fired. Every job you go to, they say, gun waiting to shoot you. You, you. you'll be fired. Before you are hired, you are already fired. There are people like that. They, they, they know why they are being hired. You ask them, why are you guys not celebrating about your job? They already know deep within them that they are about to get fired. <laughs> it's like that guy that saw now hiring. And he came back the next day to come and get hired. He now saw now firing. <laughs> now firing. <laughs> When you have exhausted as a human being, you see, I'm talking to people who have tried. People who have done everything that they can do. Money, prayer, fasting, everything. They've traveled to everywhere to go and solve their problem. You, you've involved every witch doctor, every voodoo practice, every psychic, astrologers, every shaman. Every pastor you can think of, you spend your money. You travel to other countries to go and meet so-called men of God or prophet. It has not worked. God said, I shall tell you tonight, step aside. When you've done all those things, it's not working. Step aside. You've said all the prayers in the internet and on the prayer book of your church or ministry of your religion is not working. God says, I shall tell you tonight, step aside. Whenever you get married, two, three years, you are divorced. You've done everything to make sure that it's not coming from you. And yet it's still happening. God says, I shall tell you, step aside. About time. 
Every job you have, you've clashed with people. God says, I should tell you, step aside. This is heavy stuff tonight. You've not been able to have your dream car or your dream home. At the end of the day, you're always living in somebody else's house or rented property. God said that you'll tell you that he has seen that you've tried. But please, step aside. You've done everything to love your father and mother. You've done everything to love your wife. Uh -huh. If you're a wife, you've done everything to, to minister to your husband. You've given him children. All those kind of things. And yet, they don't love you. Your in-laws hate you. They want to kill you. They want to throw you out of their marriage. They don't want you to be the one that whose children will inherit property. God said, you've done everything. Daughter, son, you've tried. Step aside. Yay! Hmm. There is no medicine that you have not consumed. No surgery you've not had. No shot that you've that they've not given to you to stop a particular sickness or one or two, you continue to get sick. God said, I should tell you, step aside. Why? So that he can move in. Wherever you go, today you are fortunate. Tomorrow you have misfortune. You've tried everything to strengthen things so that, you are, so that your life will be straightforward on a highway. Yet, it's not working. God said, I shall tell you, step aside. Step aside tonight. The reason is this. When you've done all you are able to do, you pray the prayers of agreement. You pray the prayer of aggression. You fasted and prayed. You've thought over scripture. You read it aloud. You've you memorize it. You memorize gospel songs. You play them. You dance. You've done all this. It's not working. God says to tell you, step aside. That it is a sign. When you see these things happening to you, that it is a sign that he doesn't want neither you nor any other human being nor any other powers to take his place. Hey! Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, Shila Kanda Base Keyende Mulo, Mulo, Mutaku, Musente. Everybody has laid hand on you to pass the anointing to you. It's not working. You've tried to start a ministry, a prayer group, a church, you've tried to start a business. As soon as it starts, that's when it dies. You've tried to connect with the right people for your business, or at least to stay among righteous people. Still, wicked people come in. Every time you try to fall in love, you fall out of love. There is no, there is no music. There is no love music you, you've not played for your lovers. From Barry White to Luther Vandross. From Frank Sinatra. To just give me a name to Beyonce. You've danced for them. You've sex for them. You've drunk for them. You've smoked for them. I'm talking about what people do out there. Let's not pretend like we are not doing that. People are doing that. Including those who are born again. They are smoking. They are doing those things. Some of those things, you've done it to feed him. God said, I should tell you that it's about time that you step aside and watch. That this is what he said to Moses. He told Moses to tell the children of Israel, step aside and watch. Stop complaining. Complain shows that you don't have a God as powerful, 
as glorious, as magnificent, as knowledgeable, as intelligent, as all and all the I am. He says, stop struggling. Stop stressing. Today you receive a bad news. Tomorrow is about a debt collector. Next day is about a baby is this. Next day is about a husband that, a wife that, mother-in-law this, father-in-law that. He says, she will tell you, step aside. Hmm. It's like every day there is a problem. God said, let me tell you. Stop trying. You've tried your best. Let God now try for you. Hey! Every job you go to, people gang up against you. God said, I should tell you that you've tried too much. Let me tell you, there are other people that he said I should talk to. There are people who you think you are not, you are not nice, you are not beautiful. There's no there is no facial thing you've not used to make yourself look better. God says, stop trying. You've spent so much money trying to buy clothes, uh, pumps, high heel shoes, do this, do that, look sexy. God said, you've tried enough. Stop trying. We've seen you. <laughs> we have seen you. You've tried enough. Now step aside. Let me try for you. That's what he is saying. He said to the children of Israel, Moses, tell them, stand still and watch and see what the Lord is going to do for you. For the Egyptians you are seeing today who are coming with their chariots, yes. you will not see them forever. For when you walk through the dry land to the other side and enter into the land on your way to Canaan, if they try to enter where you've entered, they will perish. And it happened to the Egyptians. God said, whoever has been pursuing you will perish. Whoever tried to take the money that I have put in your hand before the money reached you, whenever God put money in your hand, somebody will come in the dream to come and tell you, can you give me some of that money? And they end up taking all that money from you. And in the physical world, they take it all. You get pregnant. Somebody come to you to have sex with you. And in the morning, you see blood everywhere. If they don't come to have sex with you, you see somebody, a woman or a man coming to you and say, hey, what a wonderful baby. Can I touch this baby? You see yourself carrying a baby in your dream. And they say, can I touch this baby? Wow. And you see them disappear with your baby and you are left with nothing in your hand. God said, you've tried. You've tried to fight in your dream. You've tried to fight physically because you have the gift of suspicion if not of discernment and sensitivity, at least you have the one of suspicion to know who is doing that to you. But he's asking you, stop going to war. Step aside. Samantha, are you with me tonight? Step aside so that I can come in. You've tried. You've tried so hard. But this is not the days of trying. This is the days of my presence and power. I want to do it for you. There are certain things about you that God wants you to do it for yourself. There are certain things about you. God wants angels to do it for you. There are certain things about you. God wants the prayers of other people to do it for you. There are certain things about you that God wants your own prayer to do it for you. There are certain things about you that God wants the medical doctors and nurses to do it for you. But then, there are certain things about you that God wants the connection with others to do it for you. But then, you've reached that place in your life that there is no angel. Your prayer is not working. The connection is not working. 
And God said it means step aside. I, the Lord, I want to come in and do this one particular thing for you. Because you see, I hope you are listening to me tonight. Because this particular broadcast I'm doing is a classic. It is going to deliver so many people. Thousands and millions and billions. If they watch this broadcast, they will be delivered. I agree. In Jesus' name. Listen, the blood of Jesus is applied to this broadcast so that whoever touches my hands, whoever watches this broadcast and listens to this broadcast, all that the children of Israel were looking for at that time, they were not looking for food and drink. They were looking for one thing, the way to cross the Red Sea, the Sea of Reeves, to the other side. And that became one of the only biggest things that showed, that demonstrated God's love, God's presence, God's power, God's words in action. One thing Abraham needed. He said, I don't care about the money. I don't care about the wealth. Give me a son. You see, this, this thing we are talking about is the one thing that is eating you up. It's the one thing that if you have it, every other thing will come. For Hannah, it was a son. For Ruth, it was a husband. For Bathsheba, it was a king. For Abigail, it was a David, the king. Hallelujah. What is that one thing that if God gives you, every other thing is easy to have? And God has decided that it is he himself who is going to get up from the throne and come of his own. See, everybody has fought for you. You have fought for yourself. You have done, you have done, you have done everything. Everybody have done their best. Every pastor have prayed their prayers. Every, 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 uh, every prophet has prophesied. All the prophecy they've given you since the days of Adam till today. Everywhere you go, prophecy have followed you. You've not seen anything. Everywhere you go, people are heaping prophecy on you. Boom, everywhere you go. Hey, Sign up that lady. They give you the same prophecy they gave you 20 years ago. <laughs> you are going to meet this man. You are going to meet this man who has so-so-and-so feature. He is so-so-and-so prophet. He will be your husband. And everybody is hey, hey. And you go to the church of Jesus of, uh, of the Baptist church, boom, they give you the same. You go to the glorious kingdom church of God, they give you the same. You go to this, they tell you about your business that you are supposed to have started the same prophecy keep coming up. Nothing. Oh, I saw you with seven kids. And you say to them, oh, yeah, they told me that. They told me that 50 years ago. And now, I am a 60-something, 70-something. <laughs> I've not even had, I've not even had a husband talk less of having seven children. Everywhere you go. Hey, you were supposed to be in ministry and travel the whole world and so on. You've not yet even stepped outside your door yet. <laughs> God have mercy, that is it. I saw you casting out devils. You've not yet even healed a fly. 
<laughs> I saw a stadium. The stadium was filled and you were preaching the gospel. No opportunity yet to even say hallelujah. Let me tell you what is going on. When you see the one thing that your mind focuses on and you've not been able to achieve it. Everybody in your family, misfortune, accident, that you've tried, nothing is happening. Know that God is saying to you, like he told David, like he told Abraham, Moses, all these prophets and, and patriarchs of ancient times, step aside. Andrew brought two fishes, five loaves of bread from a boy. The boy's lunch. Say, so here is all we can find. What is it? What would this do for all these people? Jesus said, you, all of you disciples, step aside. The mother of, Je mother of Jesus came. They have no wine. They ran out of wine. Jesus told them, step aside. Now you, 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 go and get your gallons, begin to fetch water and fill that thing. Step aside. He met the man laying by the pool. Do you want to get healed, man? Instead of the, instead of the man saying, yes, sir. He started telling Jesus stories. Oh, I've been here for so long. Whenever I want to jump into the water, when the angel came and stay up the water, by the time I'm able to wriggle myself and, uh, and, and, uh, and drop myself into the water, somebody else has jumped in. Jesus said, I didn't ask you that. I'm just putting that. Jesus said, do you want to get here? Get up. And get your, get your begging begging bed and get away from here stop i don't have money to give do you are you aware that when you look through the entire gospel you never see one place where jesus and his disciples from matthew mark luke and john to the book of revelation you never see one place that christians were allowed to give money to beggars to homeless people. Have you, have you seen it? Peter and John say to the man, are they beautiful? Kid? Silver and gold, we don't have any. But there's something more than that that we have. We carry something. In the name of Jesus, do what? Get up and walk. Was that not bigger than them giving the man money? Now he cannot be a beggar. He can no longer be a beggar. He now has to go and walk. He now has to go and get a job. Stop begging other people and stop taking other people's money. Go and get a job, dude. Why did God, through Jesus and his disciples, perform miracles for people? He so that they will get well and go and get a job. J-O-B. You get J-E-S-U-S -S so that you can get a J-O-B. Please listen to me. You receive, you receive J-E-S-U-S. That is who? Uh, Jesus. Jesus. So that you can get a J-O-B, which is? Job. Job. So that you don't mooch on other people. You don't live off other people. It is a sin that you are able to have a job and you refuse to have a job. He says, sin before God. That's why many people whom you thought are good Christians, that they've gone to heaven, many of them are in hell because they receive J-E-S-U-S -S and they refuse to have a J-O-B. So if you're a husband, you don't have a J-O-B and you're bragging about your J-E-S-U-S, -S, 
You are on your way to hell. If you're a woman, you have to show your dignity by having a J-O-B. One day, the dude in the house who call himself husband will explode and tell you why you are not contributing. He alone has been doing that. Little thing that you can buy in the house, you go to ask him for milk. Bread. Things that cost a dollar. Because of the refusal of a lot of people to have a J-O-B, they are in hell. Another thing that makes people to go to hell, even though they have a J-E-S-U-S, -S, is race, ra ra racial thing. They are racial. It's one of the worst sin on the earth. Because race is also tied down to the practice of the occult. Tied down to the life of devils. Let me share something that the Holy Ghost shared with me yesterday. He said, do I know why the devil rebelled? One of the reasons? I said, please tell me I'm willing to learn anything. He said, because the devil loved to be homeless. He doesn't want a job. He thought that what he was doing for God was too much. Every day, the same old thing. He got fed up with it. Say, so watch. People who hate to have a job can easily be used and can easily betray other people. No matter how much you try to do for them, they will never recognize it. And they will never honor you. That's why we are not allowed to give our money to the homeless. Walking down the street. Especially people who nothing is wrong with them. God is saying, step aside. Let me come in. Because the one thing that has been eating you up, the one thing that you've been looking for, and you've not been able to have it, I myself, I'm going to get up from the throne and I'm coming to get it for you. Yes, Lord. The happiness you've been looking for, the divorce you've been yeah. looking for, so that you'll be free to pursue a dignified destiny. To enter into your assignment. God say wait. I'm getting up. Uh -huh. And I'm coming to get it for you. Put it in your hand. Set back on my throne. I'm playing with words here. God sits on his throne and does all of that. I'm just using a play on words of him getting up and down and all of that. I'm just letting you know. That there are certain things that it is the Lord who wants to do it for you. If you have tried, say your immigration paper in the country where you want to live. And the Lord has told you, stay here in this country. Stop being afraid of immigration officers, police officers. Go ahead your business. Start your business. Start doing things that you should do. That's what the Holy Spirit has told me to tell you. Because the Lord, you've paid attorneys, you paid people, you've tried to do all that people do to get to, to, to get their, 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 their paper to, to, to stay and work, have a legal life. God said, listen, I am getting up, I am coming in, and I'm getting it for you. This is a powerful prayer for any occasion and for anything, for any occasion and for any problem.
Mary, remember to write that down. This is a powerful prayer for any occasion and for anything that is troubling your life. God said, I want to stand up finally and I want to do it for you. So that heaven and earth will know how much I care about you. So that heaven and earth will know how much I love you. So that heaven and earth, including you, will know that I did it for you. Let me tell you what happened last Sunday. The amount of money we made last Sunday was 210 or $220. I'm serious. All the money we got in Virginia, in the service we did, <laughs> in the four-hour service, was $210 or $220. And the, and, the, and the devil told me, that's all you came to work. That's all you are what I say, shut up. I'm what billions and trillions, okay? Are you deaf? Can't you read? Don't you know what is written in the book for me and for, for, and for my covenant partners? And for this church? Amen. Don't you know what is written for us? Amen. Did you not remember what happened when I went to Atlanta? When people could not afford to pay me? Immediately I came home, money began to pour in. And debts were paid off. We are not owing anybody. Everything has been paid. We are ahead of the game. So I said, don't you, did you not see that? As though that was not enough. Oh my God, I'm so happy to tell you this. Woo! I told Mary, was it yesterday I told Mary, I, I asked Mary, I said, Mary, did you put money in my account? She said, no. She said, Bishop, I didn't. Because if she does something, I always know. Geneva, did you put money in my account? Because I asked her, they was, I think I was talking with Victoria about something. Victoria, are you on the line? Yes. Yeah, I was talking to Victoria about something. So Victoria was telling me what he has bought for himself and for his kids. I said, Victoria, you have to buy for me too. Victoria said, ah, you want something? Go to Geneva. Geneva will buy it for you. <laughs> Geneva, did you hear that? Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, they know, they know that you are mama. They know that. They know. Victoria said, go, go and talk to Geneva. <laughs> the other one, the other one I won't mention, I will not mention her name. That one said to me, you go and talk to your mama, Mary. Go and tell Mary of Pennsylvania. <laughs> She's your mama. <laughs> she will give you everything you want. So I started calling people, did you do then, then I, I, I said, okay, let me go and check my account. So I opened my account, began to check. Nobody has put money in my account. But this is why I was asking them. Because I spent between 2005 or more for transportation, the flight, the hotel, the suite that I stayed for, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. And then the amount of money that it takes to hire the, the conference center where we stayed. It was a lot of money. So anybody who has money, please send me money. <laughs> so do you know what happened? They were also, while I was there, some people called from some countries, they needed help. So I used my own money. I know exactly how much left. Things, things were happening really quick. Money was just going, 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 going. Well, I'm telling all of you tonight. I came back and I went to my own personal account. And I look and I saw money that has been deposited in my account. So that's why I call. Mary, didn't I call you yesterday to ask you? I called her and I went and checked it was not her. I went and checked. I didn't see 
who has deposited money. There is nobody who has deposited. But how did I have spent? It was one hundred dollars that remained in my account as of Sunday night in Virginia. How did certain kind of money came in on Tuesday when I went to look at it? Come on. Hallelujah. And the devil was yeah. making, and the devil was making mouth with me, telling me how I came and delivered people, cast, cast them out, cast devils out, and now they have nowhere to go. And now all I made was 200 and $210 or $220. But that is all I came to waste my time for. That is all that I'm worth. Can you imagine such an insult? And as though that was not enough, when I was in Vegas, I said, I'm going to do something for me. I'm going to get me something to really, really, because the devil was telling me, how much do you think you make from all these fasting of champions? So just this, just that. I said, okay, I hear you. I said, you know what? Because when once I hear the voice of devils, I will tell them that I'm going to I'm going to do something good for myself. So I went to an outlet. I asked I asked the the security guard outside Luxor. I said, uh, where do they have a good outlet here that they have very nice thing? They you, they ask like what I said like like um like a Gucci like all this. Fancy name, they have them in an outlet, you know, something, the best of the best. The man look at me and say, you are rich like that. I say, watch me. So he stopped a taxi and I entered and they took me. I don't know where that one is, but they just took me there. I went and I started seeing Versace, Gucci, this, that. All the big names you can think of, including designs. So I pick me two nice pants, two different colors. Then I look for the shoe. I couldn't find the shoe, so I came back. As I'm talking to you, so that you can know, we are talking about miracles. As I'm talking to you, God went and told somebody in Las Vegas and said, he needs certain kind of shoes. Because he has outgrown certain class of shoes. He now needs to go into a certain kind of shoes. That when he wear those shoes, people will know that that is the son of the living God. And the person, the person did not know the, the, the type of pants I now wear. Or the type of jeans I now wear. And the person gave me those ones. Without consulting me. The best, yeah. the best in the market. The Lord. We are not talking of $200 shoe. Please, that's not what we are talking about. The person did not even allow me to go gradually. You know, there is what we call going gradually. You know, because you are watching your pocket, so you go gradually. The person, instead of allowing me to go gradually, the person just shoot me up into the stars and said, that's where you belong. And they were exactly tailor made for me. Oh, tell, tell me about it. So I got back money. I got new things. Let me tell you, you can't beat God. Because he has told me that there will never be a time that I don't have money. And I've told many of you. Now listen, those of you who came to the fasting for champions, there is something that is going to happen. I'm going to email all of you so that I will put each of you on schedule. If you think that we were done with fasting for champions, you're lying because there is still 14 more videos that are coming. And... When the last video come to you, either this week or next week, I'm going to have a schedule with you where you are going to, um, you are going to receive a personal prophecy. If you attended the fasting of champions, 
you are going to receive a personal prophecy. If you cannot call me directly from your country, it will be recorded on audio and sent to you. That's how you will know. When you receive your personal prophecy, that's when you will know that the fasting of champions has actually ended. Amen. God has told me to tell you, whoever you are, wherever you are, step aside so that I can move in. Because the one thing that you want him to do for you is going to happen right now. Wherever you are in the world, stand up and tell God, I am stepping aside and I want you to move in and do for me. Take the glory. Take the honor. Since you don't want anybody to boast that they did it. You see, people have been boasting about it. We send you to school. You remember when you could not afford, afford a, 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 a cup of rice? We fed you. You remember when you were coming to, the, to, to Canada or to U.S. or you were going to the Caribbean? We put you on a cruise line. We, I was the one that bought you your A-ticket. Uh, you should remember that I did this for you. You should remember that I'm your mother, I'm your father. And your brother and your sister, we were the one who sent you to the to college or to university. Hey, without us, you would not have been you. And God has watched. Hey, we gave you that job. Hey, we did this for you. Hey, we did this for you. We got you that loan. God is watching. Oh. He has been watching. He said those people have taken the glory. And God has also heard you boasting about how you did it all by yourself. If it was not by your own strength, you would not have become anything. God has watched you and said, really? But then there's one thing in your life. That if you have it, your joy will be in abundance. Your life will really, really kick in. That house you're looking for will come quickly. Money will always come into your life. God said, I should tell you tonight. Listen to me. Step aside. Amen. Step aside. Let me move in. And let me do it for you. So that, so that it will be spoken in history. That, that it was your God. It was your king whose name is Jesus. Who did it for you. Lift up your hand tonight. And said, Father, I step aside. Do it for me. Begin to pray. Touch my hand while you pray. Lord, I step aside. I step aside. Move in. Do it for me. Father, I step aside. Move in. Do it for me. I have tried everything. People have tried for me. I have prayed and fasted. I have read the word. I have listened to sermons and preaching and teaching. I have listened to all the prophecies. People have prophesied over me. It's not working. I step aside. Now do it for me. Yay! Do it for me. Do it for me. Take the glory. Take the honor. Take the power. Let it be said that it is my king. My Jesus did it for me. My father did it for me. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Power is being poured out tonight. Wherever you are, and you are watching this video. Power is being poured in. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Yay. Yay. Yay! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to begin to say, I got it now. I got it now. I have it now. It is mine. It is mine. I got it. It is mine. I got it. It is mine. I got it now. I got it now. It is mine. Hallelujah. My God has done it for me. Begin to shout, my God has done it for me. My God has done it for me. What nobody can do for me, my God has done it for me. Nobody can heal me, he has healed me. Nobody can make me rich, he has made me rich. I got it. I got it. Hallelujah. I celebrate. Hallelujah. Testimonies upon testimonies. To the glory of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost going to erupt. From the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. is on. Now let me tell you what is going to happen tomorrow. Listen carefully. Tomorrow, Saturday, uh, ministration. I'm going to begin to introduce you into what we call heavy prayers. We are yeah. going to pray the prayer of arise. So tomorrow you are going to pray a mighty prayer. And at any time you pray that prayer, where you live, your job, you pray it at your job, you pray it in your territory, you must conquer. Amen. You must conquer. Amen. Amen. There is nothing that can defeat you. If you pray the prayer, I'm going to teach you tomorrow. Hallelujah. Please, those of you who want to cover our expenses for Los Angeles conference, please do. Send us some big money. Some of you, you've received some big taxes. Please send me some big money. Please. God bless you. <laughs> Don't forget I'm your brother and your pastor. <laughs> All right. So tomorrow, we are meeting to pray a very... Tell your family members, your friend, that they have to come to the conference of tomorrow. I want every way to be full. Because when that prayer will begin, nobody will tell you that heaven and angels are involved in what we are doing. Today and tomorrow. This is Archbishop Edikai Mary welcoming you back to our ministration. Remember, if you are not yet registered for for the operation of the Holy Ghost in Los Angeles coming up next week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Please go and register. And if you want to support us to run that campaign there, and if you want to cover up our deficit for Virginia, please do. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Good night. God bless you, Bishop. Amen. God bless you, Bishop. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You. You're welcome. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Amen. You're welcome. Bye. 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 Bye.